In my association with Project Blue Book, I don't, I know very well that it was not a scientific project. Also, I also know that they never, never would notify the media when an interesting case came up. They did everything they could to keep it down. Keep it keep down. It down. So they definitely withheld information. You know, when I first interviewed uh, Alan years ago, there was a theory going around that anybody who saw a flying saucer was probably well, befuddled by swamp gas somewhere in Louisiana well, and didn't know what he or she was yeah, seeing. We've, right. we've had a lot of documentation since that time. I think that that one of the main things that uh, has come out here that Peter has done is to substantiate the credibility of many of the civilians because it was easy to, and still is, to discredit a civilian. Uh, much more difficult to discredit a military man. Uh, in Blue Book, for instance, we would get reports from military pilots, and that was particularly embarrassing to the Air Force because after they had trained those men, and they couldn't very well, they could say that a civilian pilot might have been un untrustworthy, but they could hardly say that to their, of their own military exactly. pilots, and we got case after case after case from military pilots which never hit the press. There are th three things about this whole thing, Tom, that no one can deny. They're incontrovertible points. Even the grossest skeptic can't deny them. First of all is that the UFO reports not only exist but persist. See, when I started with the Air Force, I thought that this was a fad. In a few years, we just disappeared. Be all over, okay. And it's global. We have reports now from 140 countries. I mean, as many, practically as many countries as there are in the United Nations. And the most <coughs> important of the three things is that many, unfortunately not all, but many of the reports come from highly, highly credible, technically trained people, you see.